Kate Bowler is the Associate Professor of History of the History of Christianity at Duke Divinity School. She is the author of a book called Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies That I've Loved. <laughs> she wrote the following op-ed in the Washington Post. This opinion piece was published on June 17th of 2019. She writes, our society finds it especially difficult to talk about anything chronic, meaning any kind of pain, emotional or physical, anything that abides and lives with us constantly. The sustaining myth of the American dream rests on a hearty can-do spirit, but not all problems can be overcome. So often we are defined by the things we live with rather than the things we conquer. And any persistent, persistent suffering requires being afraid. But we hang our fears in the balance of our great loves and act each day as though love will outweigh them all. Life is chronic, she continues. Fear will always be present. I can only make those brave, soft choices to find my way forward when there is no way back. We hang our fears in the balance of our great loves and act each day as though love will outweigh them all. Because a loveless world, says Jesus, is a sightless world. If anyone loves me, he will carefully keep my word, and my father will love him. We'll move right into the right neighborhood. Not loving me means not keeping my words. And the message you hear isn't mine. It's the message of the father who sent me. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I am leaving you well and whole. This is my parting gift to you, peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned or bereft. So don't be upset and don't be distraught. You've heard me tell you, the Father is the goal and purpose of my life. The late Christian author Phyllis Tickle was fond of saying that we now live in the age of the Holy Spirit. Today we hear how it was Jesus who ushered in this new age, the age of the Holy Spirit. Earlier we heard how Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on his disciples when appearing as his resurrected self to them when he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And in today's gospel, we hear another way that this is true. The Holy Spirit will make everything clear to you, Jesus says. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the same spirit that we find at work in the Acts of the Apostles. Paul is on a mission trip, and notice how what we hear is written as a first-person account. Acts up until this very point is not written in the first person. This suggests that Luke, who is the author of Acts, was with, with Paul on this mission trip. How unusual it would have been for men from away, as we say here in Maine, to be speaking with a group of women that are local. Among them is Lydia. Lydia is already a God lover, Luke tells us, but she has not yet heard the message of Jesus. She is open to receiving this message, and Lydia is Paul's first convert, Lydia a woman, a dyer of purple cloth, a person of means because of her work, 
the head of her household at a time when few women could be the heads of households and the head of her company. We would call her the CEO of the Purple Dying Company today. Her household includes not just her family, but workers, servants, and slaves, children from infancy, girls and boys, women and men. Only the wealthiest could afford to buy Lydia's product. She's sort of the Cartier of the biblical world. Purple dye was an expensive process that made Lydia's product affordable only to the wealthiest. As successful as Lydia was, and as much as she already loved God, her heart was opened even further to receive the message of the missionaries that day. As successful as we might be, as independent as we sometimes feel, we all need God. And notice how it is God who opens wide our hearts when they are willing, our hearts are willing, just as Lydia's was. <coughs> Her heart was willing, and her heart was laid open by the Holy Spirit. And not just for her, but for her entire household, that that day were baptized for the forgiveness of sins, willing to live new lives, accepting God's fresh start. Lydia and her household knew what it was like to find the way forward. And this is what God's Spirit offers to each of us, there is always a way forward. There has always been a way forward since the beginning of time that continues to unfold. <coughs> the universe still expands. God is still creating. The age of the Holy Spirit that we live in currently continues. In the book of Revelation, we are given a vision today of the climax of creation and the culmination of time, possessing what earthly cities cannot possess. Cities like Pyongyang, Beijing, Moscow, Kiev, Berlin, Paris, London, Cairo, Jerusalem, Washington, and cities like those places where 22 have been killed and 59 injured by gun violence in the last week alone. Cities like Goshen, Kissimmee, Highland, New Orleans, Chicago, Philadelphia, Palo Alto, Laguna Woods, Winston-Salem, Elizabeth City, Houston, Amarillo, or Buffalo. Notice how John's vision is one of promise that projects outward into the future, a vision of permanence, transcendence, splendor, bliss, beauty, where there is freedom from the intrusion of sins, where there is absence from fallen experiences, where evil has been banished, where every good, true, and right need and longing is made complete, where the ever-present Lamb of God shines and sustains all that is life. This is an image of the completion of God's creating, one that follows this age of the Holy Spirit, when God's creating is brought to fulfillment, complete, whole, unified, where all is held in total love. Total love is what God's nearer presence looks like. Then the angel showed me water of life river, crystal bright. It flowed from the throne of God and the Lamb right down the middle of the street. The tree of life was planted on each side of the river, producing 12 kinds of fruit, a ripe fruit for every month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of every nation. Never again will anything be cursed. The throne of God and of the Lamb is at the center. God's servants will offer God's service, worship. They'll look on God's face, their foreheads mirroring God. Never again will there be any night. No one will need lamplight or sunlight. The shining of God, the Master, 
is all the light that anyone will ever need. And they, we, will rule with God age after age after age. To all of this we hear Jesus say also from Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. We know that all is not yet complete. All is in the process of being made complete. Everything, including you and me, not yet complete, but in the process of being made so. Because God is still creating, all is still in motion, time is still unfolding, and we do live in the age of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us, leading us to the fulfillment of all that is true and all that is love. This is why we hang our fears in the balance of our great loves and act every day as though love will outweigh them all, because love outweighs everything. <clears throat> peace I leave you, peace I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In the name of God, giver of life, Son, and eternal spirit. Amen. Amen.